choice of entity after tax cash flow problem four. Ginger owns a 12% interest in Root LLC. This year, the LLC generated $80,800 of ordinary income. Ginger's marginal tax rate is 32% and she does not pay self-employment tax on her LLC income. Compute the tax cost on Ginger's share of Root's income, assuming that she received a $41,000 cash distribution this year. Compute the tax cost on Ginger's share of Root's income, assuming that she received no cash distribution this year. So this problem is pretty straightforward, pretty easy, because you've got income. Anytime you've got income with a, a past or entity C corporation, it's a lot, sim lot, a lot simpler than dealing with losses. This is a, an income problem. So we've got, it's really about focusing on what the facts are. We've got uh, Ginger owns a 12% interest in an LLC, as we talked about earlier. And LLC generates $80,800 of ordinary income. Marginal tax rate for Ginger, 32%. No, don't have to worry about self-employment tax um, on the LLC income. Assuming, you know, it's probably, that means it's probably, Ginger's probably not actively involved in the business, more passive activity, that type of thing. Compute the tax costs on Ginger. So we have two different questions. We've got kind of variation one, variation two. So again, whether you're doing a C corporation, S corporation, LLC, when you got income, it's pretty much just get the amount of income, calculate it. Of course, if it's a corporation, the corporation subject, you don't divvy out the income. If it's a pastor entity like an LLC, so we have an LLC here and there's more than one owner. Why or how do we know? Because Ginger is not the sole owner. If Ginger was the sole owner of this LLC, then it'd be taxed like a sole proprietorship, a disregard entity. But this LLC has many different owners, has at, at least two. We know that because Ginger owns 12%. So G for Ginger, Ginger's individual, 12% owner. That's the only person we care about in this problem. That's what we're asked about, Ginger share tax costs. And the partnership reports $80,800 of income. So basically we need to allocate that income. So even though Ginger's not receiving any of this Ginger receives a uh, distribution of $41,000. We'll talk about that in a moment. But every year, past your entities, there's one level of tax, and that's the allocated items of income, loss, deduction, gain, etc. So this is the income that's allocated to the owners of the LLC. And for Ginger, we take 12% of that. So 80800 times 12% is going to be Ginger's share, which is $9,000. $696, $9,696. Okay, we're not done. That's not the tax portion, okay? Now we need to use Ginger's marginal rate, which is 32%. So we take $9,696. Let me actually um, do it over here on the going horizontal now. $9,696 times Ginger's marginal rate. So it's this 32% rate. We're going to multiply by 32%. So $9,696 times 32%. That gives us the tax cost of Ginger, which is what Ginger has to pay tax on, you know, dollar for dollar, the amount, $3,103. Okay. Now before that, that's the amount of tax that Ginger has to pay on this, on this allocated income tax Ginger owes on Ginger share. Okay. Which is what's asking. It's ultimately asking compute the tax cost. Now you're saying, well, what about this forty-one thousand dollar cash distribution? What is that? What, what about that? And that has nothing. That's we ignore that for purposes of this question. If you were asked different things like what's the consequence of the distribution, there may be gain or so, there won't be. Uh, well, it depends on what the basis is. It depends on the basis. But here it's just asking what's the tax cost of the allocated income of Ginger's share. And it's $3,103. The distribution amount does not have any bearing. And the reason why is because, remember, an LLC has one level of tax because here LLC default with multiple members is going to be treated as a, partner, as a partnership flows through and there's only one level of tax where it's allocated. The distributions are not taxable. There are sometimes there is gain yet to record on a distribution, but that's very in limited circumstances. Okay, but it's not a double taxation like a C corporation. Okay. So the second question is compute the tax cost on Ginger's share of Root's income, assuming that now there's no cash distribution. So the difference between number one and number two is that in number one, there's a $41,000 cash distribution. Number two, it's zero. It's zero. It's the same result. It's the exact same answer. Same answer because all we're focusing on is what is the tax owed basically on this amount. So it's the same $3,100 $3 tax that Ginger owes in this amount. Now the distribution again does affect tax things. 
When you do a distribution, it lowers your basis and your partnership interest and your LLC interest. So if you were to sell your LLC interest, that could then generate tax that you have to pay in terms of when you sell your LLC interest. That is true. And again, I mentioned that sometimes you do have to pay tax when there is a distribution if you don't have enough basis um, and looking at the amount of cash received. But that's very limited. Usually you get out of a distribution that you don't have to pay tax on it. Okay. So that is the same number. It's also $3,103 is what ginger owes in that case the distribution amount does not change the tax cost on the share of income that has nothing to do with with what's going on the distribution amount 